Hey, a shout Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom to everybody. Um, this is um, Ambassador Yabatazar. And um, also, I got on here with me. Um, introduce yourself, young brother. Shalom. This is Soldier May of Chicago. Yeah, this is where I'm um, coming to say um, Shabbat Shalom to you, brothers and sisters. Just give us a few minutes. Um, looks like we got only one person in the live stream, so we're just waiting to, um, for a few more people to come on in. Um, and then um, for the meanwhile, we're going to go on mute real quick and um, play some music for the time being. I know it's hard. It's right Can y'all hear that? Is it clear? Okay. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, Shabbat Shalom, family. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shabbat to the 12 tribes, 12 tribes of Israel scattered abroad. Um, thank you all for tuning in. Um, we see the brother Barak in here, Shabbat Shabbat. We see the brother Said up in here, Shabbat Shabbat. Uh, Arya Malak, Shabbat Shabbat. Um, and you know, um, Today's the Shabbat, obviously. There's um, been a lot of crazy things going on in the world. Um, there are a lot of crazy things going on in the world right now. And, um, you know, we're, we're supposed to be watchmen. So, obviously, we watch the things that go on in Israel. And it's our job to come back and warn the people. Um, as you know, um, these classes that we've been doing, um, we've been dealing with the classes more or less dealing with the destruction of our people, our families, um, 
the music industry on how that influences our our people as well as our children. Um, like I said, these rappers are the uh, new pastors, right? So I'm going to stay along the lines of the things that have destroyed our family because without looking at these things and understanding these things, um, we can never advance as a people. We'll stay constantly in the same place, right? We will not grow and we're going to wind up staying in the same condition. And I know I'm tired of this condition. I'm tired of the destruction that upon our people. So do me a favor, um, Emmanuel, read me Isaiah 52 and 8, please. And let me go ahead and get my screen share going. Let's see if I can pull, open up another tab real quick. All right, Isaiah, give me one second. Um, uh, let me go hit the screen share. Okay, so we're going to, can y'all see the screen? All right, let's see. I believe my screen is shared. Hold on, share screen. Okay, looks like I'm in there. All right, so we're going to start um, at the book Isaiah, chapter 52. And verse start up at verse second, uh, verse seven, Isaiah 52 and seven. Isaiah chapter 52, verse seven. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tingings, tidings, 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 that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publish salvation. That saith unto Zion, thy most high reign. Right. Did you see that? You know, the watchmen, they're the ones that publish peace that bring the good, the good tidings of the good. You know, that brings the information about salvation. And when they speak unto Zion, which is Israel, it says that Yahweh reigneth. Read. Verse 8. Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice. With the voice together shall they sing. Uh-huh. For they shall see eye to eye when the Most High shall bring again Zion. Okay, so the watchman shall lift up his voice. And that's what we do over at the Ambassadors of Christ, right? We are um, we stand up for the truth. We believe in all 80 books of the Bible from Genesis to Revelations. And um, we are watchmen of our, of our community. We're watchmen of our children. We're watchmen of our own house. We're watchmen of our nation. Because we want the most high power, Yahweh, to be back reigning over us. Because right now we're living in a time of his judgment. And during his judgment, it comes upon us due to the sins of our forefathers and also due to our continuous rebellion against his word. As we see, as you guys see a lot of times when the Israelites hit the streets, uh, we run up on a lot of scoffers. And it's mostly our people who are cussing us out, spitting at us, threatening our lives, wanting to fight us and all of that. But it is our job to bring the information about salvation. It is our job to bring the good tidings of the good, meaning the good works, which is the law, statutes, and commandments, right? To allow us to jump back into having our blessed life, right? To be able to jump back into being that priestly nation, jumping back into, um, back. into, into having our blessed life, right? Lock it. Okay, so lock it. my bad. The live the, the YouTube channel start playing. So anyhow, this is the purpose of a watchman to bring the good tidings and also warn the people. And at some point in time, our watchmen fell down due to their sins, due to the lust of the worlds and, and cleaving on to the other nations and forming a covenant with death, as the scriptures say, with the heathen. So let's jump over to the book of Isaiah chapter 56. And I got a few more, and then uh, we're going to go ahead and jump in. promise I won't try to keep you all as long. And let's see. This is Isaiah 56 and 10. Isaiah chapter 56, verse 10. Uh -huh. His watchmen are blind. What? His watchmen are blind. Uh -huh. They are all ignorant. 
They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark. Sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Uh huh. Yea, they are greedy dogs, which can never have enough. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way. Every one for his game from his quarter. Uh huh. Stop right there, right? I'm going to put on my Bluetooth headphones um, to see if it sounds better because I, I, I realize on some of the videos I'm not always coming across clear. So give me one second. Let me make this adjustment. I meant to do this earlier. I apologize. Um, I was trying to play a little music for you guys, but I realized I put it on mute so you couldn't hear it. Let me see if it'll work now. Okay. All right. Okay, I'm connected now. So you guys should be able to hear me again. So we just read the book of um, the chapter um, Isaiah 56 and 10, right? It says, "As watchmen of blind, they're all ignorant. They're all dumb dogs. They cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber." So a lot of us in Israel understand what those scriptures mean. Uh, for those who are not aware, we're talking about our leaders in the Christian church, um, our so-called politicians, our community leaders, and things like that. They they become blind because they follow after the ways and philosophies of the world. They want to believe that we're all one nation of people under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. And that's really an American lie, which has become for us an American nightmare. So in order to understand how they are lying down is because in loving the slumbers, because they're not teaching our people who they are. They're not teaching the law, statutes and commandments and the faith. Of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, whom the world called God in Jesus Christ. So by keeping this information away from our people, our people have become sluggards, according to the book of Proverbs. Because we've also been put to sleep. And the reason why they're greedy dogs is they, they get these freebies from the government. They cannot teach you. Or they're not always allowed, but most times it's because they choose not to teach you the truth. Because if you understand the truth about who you were in this book and your place in history, understanding why there's a purpose of wanting to delete, change history, rewrite history again, just like the Renaissance era. Like when I brought you guys out the book about the um, Negro rulers of Scotland. I don't know if y'all how clear y'all can see that. Um, Again, they're trying to rewrite history to, to do what? To further dumb us down. We got a generation of um, murder rap. And don't get it twisted. I'm not being a hypocrite. There was murder rap back in the 80s, 90s and all of that. But it was not live on TV like this. We used to have to, you know, stay up at certain times of the night to be able to see videos like that. Or at certain times of the day to where it wasn't available 24-7. There were things that were called R-rated and PG and things of that nature, which they they broaden the scope of the de definitions of those words, right? So again, even our leaders, they act like they cannot understand. Some of them cannot. So again, the title is this class is slavery at the hand of our enemies, right? And what we have to do is go back in time and take a look at what was done to us. I'm a Shah Shabbat Zebulon warrior. Shabbat Shalom, one of the brothers down out of H-Town. So one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to be bringing a little bit of history out. Um, I got a lot of books. I haven't had time to read them. But when I do have time to read them, I have a bad habit of starting one book, jumping to another book, and then jumping to another book. But then I'll remember those various parts that I read, which allows me to kind of do this. So what we're going to do is be going into something that was called, that's called, um, and you know we have to be careful about language. So we're going to say, there's a book out there called the, the Small Hat People and Negro Slavery. And then also there's another one I want to go into 
that's called becoming the southern small hats. If you don't understand the Israelite jargon, if as you follow along, you'll become aware, right? So one of the things I want us to do is um uh, Emmanuel, give me um first Peter two and nine. And let me go back to my screen share. First Peter two and nine. Because this scripture says a lot that we're about to read. So go ahead when you're ready, um, Prince. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, Khan, 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 Khan. Khan, Khan, Khan. A peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Right, so let's do something real quick. Let's look up this word peculiar. Because this word has a, a very great meaning. It says, it says, um, it's an adjective. It's a description. It's strange or odd, unusual. Uh, let me find a better, better one. Okay, here it is. This is Miriam. A characteristic is of only one person, group, or thing, right? A different from the usual or normal, right? Eccentric, unusual, right? Uh, let me get some synonyms and um, antonyms. Let's see if it opens up any place. Uh, let me see. Abnormal. Um, a special, exceeding, exceptional, extraordinary, extraordinary, a freak, odd, phenomenal, preternatural, rare, singular, uncommon, uncustomary. So when we take a look at our people, and the scripture says, again, I hope you my screen ain't freezing, um, that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a, a holy nation, a peculiar people. That ye should show the praise of him which has called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. So what the darkness is, it's not knowing the truth. The darkness is, is not understanding why we went into slavery. Not understanding who put us into slavery. Not understanding their names. Where they come from. What they did to us. And how it destroyed us. You go back a couple of videos back, you'll see the, one, the part one and part two of the destruction of the black family. Right? So in verse 10, it says, in times past, we're not a people, but are now the people of the Most High, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. So right now, this is the time to get understanding so you can step into that light from that darkness to obtain that mercy. Because right now, we're coming across as a seed of evildoers. In order to become a seed of evildoers, you, a lot of times, as we know as children, children are born innocent. They don't know the concept of good or bad or right or wrong. And the environment around them teaches them what they become. I gave the analogy of a couple of family members or friends um, that grew up together that I knew. One was told that he was going to die in the streets, be strung out on drugs or be in prison for the rest of his life. The other one was told that he was going to go to college, be successful, have the family. And guess what? Through those words that were imparted into those children, that was actually the outcome of that family. And the one who had the curse has spoken over his life, he did die. Exactly the way they described. We went to the back of the head of the red light. Strung out on drugs. So to understand our destruction, we got to understand... We understand that we had the commandments. There was a blood covenant, both covenants in the Old and New Testament. Well, actually, both covenants are in the um, Old Co Old Testament, according to um, today's um, terminology. But in reality, the covenants were only for the nation of Israel, who went into slavery on ships. So let, let me jump over to um, Jews and Negro slavery real quick. I just want to have you guys read, read with me real quick. Uh, let me see. Let me 
What did I want? Is this the one? Is this an indigo slavery? Okay. Let's go to this page. Let's see. Bear with me. Okay, my computer. Let me refresh my screen. Hey, let me stop my screen share real quick and get the screen taken care of. Um, give me one second. All right, trying to refresh the screen now. Okay. Okay. I can't believe this is happening. Okay, all right, cool. All right. All right, let me see. All right. So, Lockyer, for the delay, let me get back to my screen share right now. I'm actually sweating. Probably need a fan in here. Let's see, Sarah. Screen. Okay, here we go. All right, so we see the title of this document is called The Jews and Negro Slavery in the South, 1789 to 1865, author Bertrand Wallace Corn. So this is an actual book. I don't own it, but I have the PDF. Um, sometimes these books dealing with these dealing with these people, the small hats um, can be a little difficult to get, get your hands on because of, you know, the cost. So I want to jump down to page 17, I believe. Okay, 17. Okay, cool. All right. Okay, all right, right here it says, it is possible nevertheless to gain some information of value from census returns. So what they're doing was they were taking a census at this time of the amount of so-called white people down in the South and then the Jews that came, Jewish people or the small heads that came over from Europe and Germany over to America. You know, let me switch my fan around. Okay, got it. All right, so um, so what they're doing is early in this time in, in this in this PDF PDF, they were doing a list. They were like taking a, a census of all the Jews that were like kind of that came to America, right? Um, you had the German Jews, you had the um, European Jews that came over, and you can see this was um, something that was delivered at at the um, presidential address at the fifth annual meeting of the American Jewish Historical Society, February 18, 1961, right? So you know that this is something, this is historical information. Um, and what they're doing at this time, right, they're talking about Jews as planters and owners of slaves, the treatment of the slaves by the Jews, the emancipation of slaves by the Jews, and then the Jews as harsh taskmasters, taskmasters and other things that you see, right? So I'm gonna jump down to the few excerpts I wanted to go to again. So in 17, uh, page 17, I says precise statistics concerning the ownership of slaves by Jews are hard to locate. Since this record must be used with caution because certain Jews known from other sources to be resident in a specific specific area at a given time were not listed at all. In other words, even when they're doing the census records, just like they do right now where they send, send out the census on people and all of that, my house, we don't subscribe to the census report. We don't allow the enemy to number us. The scriptures clearly speak about doing census and all of that. Right. But at this time, these people, the small heads knew the same thing. 
So what they would do is they would hide who they were or wouldn't even register themselves at all, right? So it says, um, because certain Jews known from other sources to be resident in a specific area at a given time were not listed at all. Peddlers and traveling merchants, for example, were apt to be on the road when the census was taken. Some of the manuscript census returns are quite el eligible, meaning they were hard to read. In addition to frequent misspelling, the identification of Jewish names were always constitute a problem. So even with mis in, in illegible handwritings, and also the identification of the different names of the small hats constituted a major problem, right? So anyway, it is possible, nevertheless, to gain some information of value from census returns. My colleague, Dr. Malcolm Stern, which is a small hat name, has investigated the 1790 manuscript census returns in his gene genealogical researches as gener generously provided me with the relevant data, right? So anyway, um, it says, unfortunately, the returns for Georgia and Virginia were destroyed, but South Carolina data provided valuable insight. 73 heads, heads of households have been identified as Jewish. Of these, at least 34 own one or more slaves to a total of 151 slaves, right? So you had 73 heads of household, and they had a total of 151 slaves. The only, the only large holdings of slaves were possessed by Jacob Jacobs of Charleston, who had 11 and Abraham Cohen, Cohen, who had 21, Solomon Cohen, 9, and Esther Myers, 11, all of the Georgetown district, right? So again, when the scripture says our enemies formed a tumult against us, we cannot, we just can't be blind to not knowing who these people were and the names, right? And where these people come from and the things that they did to us. Because in this same society that we live in, the same people that we're mentioning right now are the ones that control Hollywood, television, the music industry, the diamond districts, the banking systems, and they're set up in almost every country. Every major country is under the financial restraints of these people, right? So anyway, let me drop down some. And I want to read this real quick. It says, it is let me just it is a misfortune that Ira Rosenwake did not see fit to reproduce the data about slaves in his estimate analysis of the Jewish population of the United States in 79. Uh, September 1960, page 23 through 68. Dr. Stern's notes have been published. They do offer, however, an interesting contrast between ownership of slaves in South Carolina and other states. These statistics are as follows of 23 Jewish heads of household in New England states, five own a total of 21 slaves. Of 60 Jewish households in New York, 20, 21 own a total of 43 slaves. Of 31 Jewish heads of household in Pennsylvania, only three own a total of six slaves. And of eight Jewish heads of household in Maryland, three own a total of three slaves. Now, I want y'all to do some research. When you go a little further down into these different states and these communities, Maryland, Pennsylvania, New York, New England, as well as Utah and other states, you have very strong um, what you call Amish communities. And if you notice that they're Bible believing, they've separated themselves from the world, they do everything on their own, and they farm. Well, these were the offshoot people of these small head people, right? So what I, what I want you to take a look at is this is Judah P. Benjamin's plantation house at Bella Chase. Photographed in 1947 by Stuart Lynn in New Orleans. This is an author's collection, right? This picture is an author's collection. This is what a slave house looked like. This was a plantation house owned by those who stole our identity. If you haven't been paying attention to the scriptures, it talks about, as well as history, it talks about another people going into our land and assuming our identity. Christ spoke about in Revelations 2 and 9 and 3 and 9 about them that call themselves small heads or Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. So this is this is what their castles look like that housed us. These, this was the house of horrors. These are the things that the scriptures talked about that the Israelites who were sold into slavery on ships as bond men and bond women. 
these are the things that we went through, right? So give me a second real quick. Um, look, I want to get a scripture real quick. Give me one second. Deuteronomy 6 and 21. 6 and 21. Emmanuel, read um, Deuteronomy 26 and 21 for me, real quick. Deuteronomy 26 21. Deuteronomy 26. My screen share still on? Okay, fine. Oh, uh, my Salaki, do do around any six and one. My bad. My bad. Do around any six and twenty-one. Reverse twenty-one. Deuteronomy chapter six, verse twenty-one. Mm -hmm. Then shall say unto thy son, We were Pharaoh's bondmen in Egypt, and the uh -huh. Most High brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Right. So, in our history as black people, so called African Americans and so called Latinos of uh, Negro and Taino descent, if you know your history and if you understand the Bible, you'll understand that we were those that were slave men and women in Egypt. And Yahweh brought us out with a mighty hand with Moses, right? The Most High was the mighty hand, but he used a Messiah-like figure in Moses to deliver us up out of there, right? And in verse 22, it says that the Most High, you know, uh, showed signs and wonders, and he brought great soreness upon, you know, uh, Pharaoh, right? So this is the thing that we have to understand. The Bible says there's nothing you want under the sun. So the same way that we're delivered out of the hands of Pharaoh in Egypt, we have to go back and take a look at what our, who our forefathers were dealing with so we can understand whose hand we need to be delivered out of. Okay? So let me just take a look and see if I see anything in the chat. God, you're right. You're right, Zebulon Warrior. They still do got the same designs today. Uh, they might call them their mantras and all of that uh, and other things, right? But let me just go back, back over here real quick. So again, this is a house owned by Judah P. Benjamin's plantation house at Bella Chase, right? You see this monstrous abomination? The house of horrors. See, the other nations, when they come to America, they come over here and live the American dream. And I keep telling our people over and over and over when I talk to them in the streets that we are living and still living the American nightmare. Right. So anyway, let's take a look at something. Right. It says committed to the jail of Powhatan pa pa County on the third day of April, a Negro woman who calls herself Jenny. She says she was raised by William Gatewright of the country of Henrico, County of Henrico, who sold her to Mr. Fulcher, the butcher of Richmond, and by him sold to, to by him sold to one Williamson, who sold her to one Webster. Of Buckingham, who sold her to Mr. J Mr. John Campbell of King of King and Queen County, who left her at Lewis Fortines, a free Negro of this county, from which last place she eloped. She appears to be about the age of 16 or 17, is very black, and has what is that? And has lost form of her upper teeth. The owner is desired to come and, and prove his property, pay the prison fee what what is it the prison charges and take her away or he will be dealt with as the law directs who's this moses m cardozo paul watson courthouse may 17. richmond inquirer may 21st 1805 right so let's jump over to deuteronomy 28 real quick right i just want to show you some which is lining up the scriptures with history And give me one second. Uh, 
Hold on, I know what I want. I got it highlighted. All right, so let's um, start at verse 23, Emmanuel. Because actually, um, yep, start at verse 15 real quick. Because in order to understand how a nation of people can be captured and sold all across the world on slave ships to the Western Hemisphere and all the surrounding islands and even places on the Eastern Hemisphere. How does a whole nation of people who are natural born fighters or as we appear to be today, natural born killers because we spend a lot of time murdering our own people, destroying our own communities, destroying our own. How can a people that have that type of spirit upon themselves wind up in a situation like this? We gotta scratch our head. Really, we really gotta ask ourselves. We gotta scratch our head. How does one as strong as us, we're the best sports players, the strongest on the football fields, if you've been paying the MMA and UFC, the brothers are working it out. They're kicking ass and taking names. Excuse my broken Hebrew. How does such one strong people wound up in a place to where we're reading about a daughter named Jenny being sold multiple times by Jewish sellers, right? So go ahead. Go ahead and read that. Read verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Uh -huh. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Most High, thy power, to observe, uh -huh. to do all his commandments and statutes, which I command thee this day, uh -huh. that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So my question to you again, if we're such a strong people and we dominate each other, and we dominate in the Olympic Games, and we dominate in the boxing rings, we dominate on the basketball court, we dominate in football. How such a how can such a strong people be captured and sold into slavery? We just read it to you in Deuteronomy 28. We told you that you're a royal priesthood and a holy nation. But some along, somehow along the way, because of sin, that the Most High God turned his back on us for a period of time and allowed the breaking of a covenant. And let me just break a covenant down to you again. I, this is the simplest way I can break it down to you. A covenant is the same thing when you sign a lease for an apartment or a car. That's a lease, a contract, a covenant. When you sign that paperwork, you agree to pay your rent $1,200 a month, $500 a month for your car note. And if you pay all of this stuff, you can live through this period of time or you can buy the car out. And that's your reward. The fulfillment of the contract. The fulfillment of the covenant, right? So let's say you don't pay that car note. Say you all owe $40,000, you pay them um, $30,000, but you slack on that payment for six months. Guess what? They keep your thirty thousand. They come take the car back. They sell it off cheaper. Now you got to pay the auction fees, the lawyer fees, the rest of the value of the car, and then what other fees that they add on to it. Those are the curses of the contract and the covenant, or the lease. Same thing with you being evicted, and all your stuff being thrown out on the streets. So this is why we fail because we broke a contract, we broke the lease, or we broke the covenant, right? So drop down to verse 23, and give me one second because I want to show y'all. Because our, our people are very visual, and if you tell these people, our people a lot of times, they don't understand, right? So Deuteronomy 23. 28, I mean, that's 28, 23, right? You know, start at 22 and then read 23. Verse 23. 
the most high, the most high shall smite thee with the consumption and with the fever and with an inflammation and with the extreme burning and with the sword. Yeah. Okay. And with an extreme burning, and with the sword, and with blasting, and with mildew, and it shall pursue thee until thou perish. Uh huh. And thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass, and the earth that is under thee shall be iron. Right. So here we go the images of our people. Got a sister right here researching the Southern slave ship. You got this right here. Let me see if I can zoom that a little bit. If it's gonna, nope, it, didn't, it made it smaller. But I'm pretty, oh, here it is. Let me click that. I don't know if that'll help. But either way, you can see this woman in shackles. It says, sculpture change and Armstrong gun, John Bell's American slave. Right, classical art in Atlantic slave trade, right? A daughter of Eve, right? Ne Look, it says right here. It says Negro woman or child only. Property of Georgetown County Plantation Police, right? So anyway, these are the curses that fell upon us. But let's get back to it and finish reading, right? right? So again, we just read about the sister um, Jenny, right? Now here's another thing right here. This is a slave bill of slave. This is a slave bill of sale as Cohen 1864. Cohen, let's get that last name. Cohen, Jewish. From Hebrew Cohen, priests. Priests are traditionally regarded as member members of a hereditary caste descended from Aaron, brother of Moses, right? Now, we say that we're the Israelites, but these folks say they're Hebrew priests, right? You don't see this in the scriptures of the priests doing things like this, right? So anyway, let's get back to it. Let's finish reading. See, and then here it is. It says auction is private sale. So I'm not going to read all the names, but what I want to do is zoom this in for you because our people, we want to love everyone and we think everybody loves us the same. But then we show so much hate towards each other, right? So it says, auctioners, private sales, prime field Negroes and house servants by B. Mordecai, 5 State Street, and it's a private sale. Look at all the names. Tom, 25 years of age. John, 21 years of age. Lil Burn. Who the hell names their kid Lil Burn? Right? Then you got Isaac. Then you got Drusilla, 20, a seamstress, a washer and ironer and house servant. Elvia, a seamstress, washer and iron. Amelia, Lydia, Louisa Paxley, Caroline, Betsy, Margaret. So you're seeing all these women, as well as our men, going through all these curses together. It says a state sale, valuable Negro, Negroes, by Jacob Otolongui. Will be sold on Tuesday, the 6th day of January at Ryan's Mark, Chalmers Street, at 11 o'clock. The following Negroes belonging to an estate. November, age about 65, a carpenter, Jane, age 30, a market woman, Jane, age 25. The above Negroes can be seen at my office, 22 Broad Street, and treated for at a private sale previous to the end of the sale. Family. The scriptures say that we're going to be sold unto our enemies. That's one of the curses. If you're an Israelite, you know Deuteronomy 28, 68 is the milk scripture, right? Here's evidence of this. If this is December 24th to the 25th and 29th, the 31st, and January 1st. These are the different dates, right? Lewis Levy, number four, Wall Street, under the city hall, manufacture of all kinds of service clothing, right? This day at February 6 or 9 o'clock at our auction rooms, 100 sacks, white corn, 40 kegs, 10 half pipes. See, the scripture talked about that. And, 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 and just take a look at this real quick. Just give me a second, man. Oh, my God. This is so irritating. This is so irritating. 
when I read this, man. I'm sorry, man. I get angry when I read this, right? It says you got 70 boxes of soap. These are the things that are being sold. Oh, because remember the Joel 12, chapter 3, verse 3. Let's go to Joel 3. Let's see if we make it. If I'm just saying this or if the scriptures say this. Wait for my. Crack my office door to see if I get better reception. So real. No, you still breaking up. I'm still breaking up. Okay, I think I just got some reception now. Um. Oh yeah, I can hear now. You said okay, go cool. to I, I, what? Yes, yeah, draw chapter three. Right, because. What we just read, and I apologize. Um, I didn't know I was breaking up. Um, I just know my screen kind of messed up. So I just want to rehash real quick what I brought over, right? So I was showing you guys. I don't know. What was the last thing you guys heard um, 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 of T. Priest Saban or um, um, Emmanuel? What was the last thing you guys heard me say? Go to Joel 3. Okay. Uh, all right. So you guys heard so, so all this stuff I showed you guys right now, scrolling up the screen. You know when I talked about con, con. Okay, con. Con. okay. So all right, come the water, the water. So where I was was that right here it says by S L and I I Jones, right? A lot of times a, a lot of black people got this last name Jones. This is also one of the, those small hat people's names, right? But again, this is this day what they're doing. This is the other side of the auction. These are the things that they're selling at this auction as well, right? Besides slaves. This is a common practice because remember, they're known as the merchants, right? As I talked about with the, the gold and diamond district, right? So go ahead and read Joel, start of, start Joel chapter 3, verse 1. Joel chapter 3, verse 1. For behold, in those days, in that time, when I shall bring again the capacity, I mean, so the captivity. I, the captivity of Judah or Jerusalem. Uh -huh. I will also gather all nations and will bring them out into the valley of Jehoshaphat and, and will plead with them for my people and for my heritage. Right there, right? So this is a future prophecy about when the day of the Lord is coming, right? This is something that has not happened when he's brought down all the nations into the valley of Jehoshaphat. That's going to be every nation. Um, a lot of us believe it's going to be World War III or somewhere around that time. Um, so, again, this is a future prophecy, but you see, again, that this is the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, right? And go ahead and read that from the Valley of Jehoshaphat. Say that again, you start breaking up. Uh, read verse 2 again. Why am I breaking up? Verse 2. I will also uh -huh. gather all nations. And will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. Uh -huh. Plead with them for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and part of my land. And they have cast lots for my people and have mm -hmm. given a boy for a harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. Right. So you see in verse two, it says that he will plead with them for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they are scattered among the nations. So understanding that our people were scattered all across the four corners of the earth. Right. And the heathens went over there and divided the land, which they called the so-called Middle East, which did not exist until about uh, the British War when they took over that area. Right. But in verse three, the interesting thing it says is they have cast lots for my people. And have given a boy for a harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. So back to what we're looking at, we're seeing this right here. And I'm going to zoom in a little more if I can. If I can get a better view. So y'all can see it. 
So here's what they traded. If they weren't um, trading shekels, gold, and silver for the slaves, this is what they were doing. Five caskets of bacon and ham, 50 baskets of champagne, uh, 40 kegs of lard, uh, what is that, domestic brandy. These are the things that they were trading, right? And then it says, Negroes at the Oxen by AJL and T. Levin. Another small head name will be sold on Monday, the third Jan January 3rd, next at the courthouse at 10 a.m. 20 likely Negroes, the larger number of which are young and desirable. Among them are field hands, hostlers, hostlers, carriage drivers, house servants, and of the following ages, as we can see all the different names, right? But what's interesting is that I see Sila, I see a Nikki, I see that she's 11, she's eight, Robinson is six, Candy is three, the infant, an infant, so he has to be nine months old if he's an infant, right? And if you scroll further down, you see Elders 13, Charles six, uh, Scipio, age two, you see Tilla, age nine. You see another one named Guy at the age of 12. It says the above Negroes are sold for the purpose of making some other investment of the proceeds. The above Negroes are sold for the purpose of making other investments of the proceeds. The sale was there, will therefore be positive. Positive for who? Positive for who? Who's going to benefit off the selling of these slaves? It says terms, a credit of one, two, or three years for notes paid by either of the bank, banks with two or more proof endorsements with interest from date purchases to paper paper. Black River Watchmill will copy the above and forward the bill to the auctioners for payment. December 17th, 1852. So if you understand the banking industry, the stock market, the first commodity that was ever traded on the stock market with us, the so-called Blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans of Indian Taino, Indo, Indian and Taino descent. Let me get, let's go back to Deuteronomy. Let's go back to Deuteronomy. We're going back to Deuteronomy 28 real quick. So we're going back through these curses and see if they fit us. Because we, because to understand the curses and we understand why we became cursed because of our rebellion against the Most High, even to this day through the hands of our forefathers, right? We also have to understand who these enemies are. We understand that the Most High sent them against us but we just read in Joel that there's going to be a recompense for what they have done, right? So do me a favor, read Deuteronomy 28 and 32. And before you start, let me just go back again. Remember this? See these young names? Rachel, Scipio, Lydia, Tilla. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. Uh -huh. and there shall be no might in thine hand. So what do you think our men and women were feeling when their children were being taken away from them? Or what about the older slaves that were with them, like Robinson and Elsie? And what about Die? Wow. The guy's name is Die, or is that D-I-C? I don't know. What about Basket? What about Sarah, Mother Sarah, who was 60 years old? They had their, no might in their hand. They had no strength. Then their eyes looked long and fell with longing for their children, and they had no strength in their hand. Huh? 334. Verse 34. So that thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. The most high shall smite thee in the knees, 
and in the legs with the sore botch that cannot be healed from the sole of thy foot unto the top of thy head. Then we just read in the scripture, he said, the, the heaven above your head shall be brass. Then we just see this the, the, the picture, the image of our sister, the uh what, what do you call that? That's the bust, a statue made out of copper. She had brass on her neck and at the sole of her feet. Remember the most high said that was going to be our heaven. Read 36. Mm -hmm. Verse 36. The and most high. Right? You said 37? 36 and 37. Yeah. The most high shall bring thee, and thy king, which thou shalt set over thee, unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. Uh -huh. And then yeah. shalt thou serve other gods, wood and stone. Wood and what? Wood and stone. Right, so as you see, I'm coming back. I, I, let me, I'm not sure. Let me see. If, I'm not, because you remember, so it's a delay on this speech. So remember, I brought this book out the religious instruction, the, the religious instruction of the Negroes in the United States, right? If you get your copy of this book, you'll read some interesting things up in here about how they controlled us through serving wood and stone and serving other gods and the religion and the twisting of the scriptures because they had an advantage. The scriptures were written originally in the Hebrew, in the Paleo-Hebrew and in the Greek, and then some versions in the Latin. So once we came to America, and as I showed y'all, uh, showed y'all the other book, and it's, I'll find it real quick. Oh, here it is. Um, the, the Negro rulers of Scotland, the Negro rulers of Scotland and the British Isles, right? I'm just moving it up because I'm not sure where my camera is because I'm not looking at the screen. I told you about why the we shared with you over at Ambassadors of Christ and many other Israelites shared with you of the reason why the Bible was translated over from the Hebrew to Greek and the Latin over into the English, right? So you got to understand some. So when we were when we came to America, we couldn't read English. So when you can't read or write. You're going to follow and do as you're instructed to do as this book, as I'll bring this book out again at another time um, to prove that, as well as a couple of other ones. This is why we see the continuous destruction of our people, because we've been destroyed through these curses and through the hands of our enemies. And we take that same destruction out and perpetrate it against our own. So read 37 again, verse 37. Verse 37, and thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword uh -huh. among all nations, whether the Most High shall lead thee. Right, you shall become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword. So again, when we when we look, uh, where am I at? When we look at these names, right? These are the names that were given to us by a slave master. These were not the names that we would call each other. Right? Look at your name that you use commonly today. That is a curse because that's not the name that the Most High has given us, nor the names that our parents came with when they came to America. So let's read. Um, Give me Deuteronomy 20. Uh, let's drop down to 45 and 46 real quick. Verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Most High to keep his commandments and his statutes which he command thee. And, and they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. Right. Give me one second. Okay. 
Sí. You see this right here? It says the white man's road through the black man's home. Am I clear or am I breaking up? You're clear. Okay, come. So what we see right here, the devastation of Black Wall Street, the white man's road through the black man's home. The racial violence the red summer of 1919 witnessed white on black murder, right? A view, a history of white race riots in America, the morning call. 1921, mob burned Black Wall Street down. Red summer of 1990, 1919. These people that we're reading about that sold us are also our enemies. We have to understand this. We have to understand this. Look at this. Negroes, Negroes. This is information that should be taught in our schools, right? These are things that we should be talking about to get an understanding of why we think the way that we do. Why do we have the distortions in our communities? Why do we have so much black on black violence? To enslave a person and to keep them shackled and destroyed, it takes violence. We're marching around all the time saying, stop killing us, black lives matter. But failing to realize that the same police people, like his brother right here, he's brainwashed. He might want to be a lawful dude, you know, protect his people, protect the community, but he's also under the control of his same enemies, which makes him powerless or can turn him into a coon against his own people, right? So we, we, we see all of these things going on and we never ask ourselves, why are we still in these conditions? Look at these two beautiful black mothers, right? right here right what if they've lost their children to the hands of this violent society and this country we always have to go back and look at how these things came about who did it who had a hand in it and how they benefited right so let me drop down to and it's crazy that i segmented into violence Let me see. Where do I want to go? Where is it? Uh, hold on. Where am I at? I see here. Um, All right, let's go here. It says right here, it says, it will be noticed, of course, that these examples of emancipation were all quite early, right? So they're talking about the Emancipation Proclamation or the emancipation of the freeing of the slaves, right? If we go up a little further up, and I should have just read a little bit of it, um, it's talking about um, talking about slaves who have been set free, right? So it says, um, it says, uh, purchasing a slave for rapid emancipation was that of Joseph Tobias of Charleston, who on July 23rd, 1798 bought a slave named Jenny from for 500 from Do Dr. James Plethora Thorough and probably freed her for former services rendered me. Perhaps she had nursed him during an illness while she was uh, still the physician's property. In the same year, Solomon Raphael of Richmond and his partner freed their slave Sylvia and her child. And six years later, Raphael emancipated another slave, Priscilla, and, and blah, blah, blah. So it's talking about the emancipation of the slaves. The portion I was looking looking for is when they were setting these slaves free, were the slave catchers, and I'm looking for, give me a second, maybe it's page 36, maybe it's page 36, where was it? Okay, here it is right here. It says, so this is um, chapter four. It says, Jews as harsh taskmasters, right? 
So we're always talking about the white man, right? The white man, the slave master, the white man, this, the white man, that. It's true. The French, the Dutch, the Spaniards, uh, all of them, from Columbus all the way down to Leo Cipriol Africanus. Yes, they all had a hand in there, but through society's teachings of the Holocaust and what took place over there, our people feel some sense of unity with, with, the, with the small hats and not understanding that the hard hats were the, the funders of the slave trade, financed the slaves, financed Columbus in his trip, as well as provided information on where the people were. Why? Because they were reading our books, the Apocrypha, looking at the old maps. So it says right here in chapter four, Jews as harsh taskmasters, acts of kindness towards Negroes were the only relief in the reality of a system which placed white masters in a position of absolute and total control over their slaves. Jews participated in every aspect and process of the exploitation of the defensive blacks. I'll read that again. Jews participated in every aspect and process of the exploitation of defenseless blacks. The most extreme case on record was the murder of a slave by Joseph Cohen of Lynchburg, Virginia in 1819, a crime for which he was indicted, tried, and convicted, although, of course, the penalty for the murder of a Negro by a white was much less severe than a penalty for a trivial misdemeanor committed by a Negro. Did y'all understand that? Con, con, of course. It says the penalty for the murder of a Negro by a white was much less severe than the penalty for a trivial misdemeanor committed by a Negro. So let's put this in, 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 in today's terms, right? So it was, let's, let's look at it from today. It's the same thing. Back then, you could kill a black dude, a black man, or a Native American, or so-called Hispanic. And none of those are real names. Those are just names given by the, the conquistadors or the slave masters, right? That a slave master could kill a Negro and receive, receive a light penalty, a light penalty versus a misdemeanor offense committed by a Negro, meaning that the slave received a harsh punishment for something trivial. So let's think of what a misdemeanor is nowadays. So we're talking about cops killing black people, right? Getting off with murder, right? Getting away with murder, hold themselves not accountable, right? Like the scriptures say, right? But then as we seen, black people being shot and killed for shoplifting, stealing food, stealing clothes, executed right on the spot. Lives taken right from them. Right there on the spot. Judge, jury, prosecution, right? There's nothing new under the sun. The scripture says, go ask thy father and they shall tell thee, right? So let's continue reading. It says, crimes of violence against slaves by Jews were probably quite rare. And I find it hard to believe because how can it be quite rare if you're part of the slave institution? Right. Let me just take a look at the comments because I haven't really been looking into the um, into the uh, notes and all of that. Right. Let me see. Okay, I see the brothers Zebulon, the Scots, the Irish, the English, and the Spaniards were all tawny, dark skinned people. You're right, brother. You're right, brother. And you're definitely correct on that, King. You're definitely right. And that's when you know I kind of went back into this book right here. You know, Negro rulers and all of that. Right. So let me see. Let me see, Brother Zion. Hey, Emmanuel, grab Judah 5 and 20 for me. Sergeant Zion brought out Judah 5 and 20. I wasn't looking at the chat, so let me get over there real quick. Sorry, y'all been just kind of caught away with reading and stuff. And just trying kind to of bring this out. So let's go to the book of Judah, chapter 5. Go ahead. You said Jews uh, 5 and what? Judah, 5 and 20 in the Apocrypha. Oh. Judah. Judah is chapter 5, verse 20. Now, therefore, uh -huh. 
my most high and governor, if there be any error against this people, if they sin against their their God, let us consider that this shall be their room, and let us go up, and we shall overcome them. Right. So again, when we we're talking about earlier and the curses about how we went into slavery and how we're such a strong people and all of that. When we formed a covenant with the Most High God, He was our protection. He was our shield. He was our buckler, as we saw in the in the Torah, the many many nations that the Most High um, destroyed for us, that went out before us and, and, and encompassed us with His angels and gave us the extra strength and power and the gumption to execute His judgment upon the other nations. When He brought us about it is out of um, Egypt and when He brought us back into the Promised Land. You know, um, so read that again. So actually, you know what? Give me one second. I want to go up a little higher than this, right? Okay. So read, really start up at uh, start up at uh, verse thirteen. The water, the water, King. Do the five or thirteen, just for a little context. Verse thirteen, and the Most High dried the Red Sea before them. During the time of Moses, read. And brought them to Mount Sinai in Kedis barn and cast forth all that dwelt in the wilderness. Read. So they dwelt in the land of the Amor Amorites. Amorites. Mm -hmm. And they destroyed by their strength all of Esabon. Mm -hmm. Passing over Jordan, they possessed all the hill country. Read. Now, and you know what? Stop there. Drop down to verse 17. So pretty much, as you see in 16, these are all the nations that were in those lands. As we crossed over the Jordan going into the promised land, these are all the nations that the Most High went out and fought for us and delivered all of them into our hands, right? So read verse 17, right, for, for the context. Verse 17. While they sinned and not before their, their God, they prospered because the God that hath iniquity was with them. Read that again. Because the, the, the power that hated, I got it. Because the most high that hated iniquity was with them. So in, a, in other words, meaning that when we're walking righteous and keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, the most high was on our side and he fought in our battles with us. But go ahead. Verse 18. Verse 18. When they departed from the way which he appointed them, they were destroyed in many battles very sore and were led captive captives into a land that was not theirs and the temple of their power was cast to the ground their cities were taken by the enemies so, like so stop right there right so again this is how again what we've been talking about understanding how we get in these conditions what caused it the five w's who what when where and why that we learned in grade school right because we departed from the way which was appointed to us, that's how we feel. When we do right, the Most High is on our side. When we sin against the Most High, He's against us, right? So this is why we were cast to the ground and we were, our cities were taken by the enemies, right? And that's why we were sold for a boy. A girl was sold for, for, for um, the scripture we just read about a boy being sold for a wine and a, and a, and a girl being sold as well in the curses in Deuteronomy. So go ahead, uh, drop down to verse 18 and 19. I mean, 19 and 20. Verse 19. But now they are returned to their power and they are come up from the places where they were scattered and have possessed Jerusalem, uh -huh. where their sanctuary is, and mm -hmm. are seated in the hill country, for it was desolate. Now, therefore, uh, my Lord and governor, if there be any error against this people and they sin against their power, let us consider that this shall be their room and let us go up and we shall overcome them. And read 21 and stop. But if there be no iniquity in their nation, let my most high now pass by. Let's so there. Right. Read. And they said, No, read it again. It said, But if there be no iniquity in their nation, let my Lord now pass by, lest their power defend them and their God be for them, 
and we become a reproach before all the world. So basically what it's saying is that if we, we're not sinning, the Most High is on our side. And if we're in error and if we're sinning against God, that's how we fell into these conditions. And for water, for water, again, uh, Sergeant Zion for bringing it out. Um, let me see. Uh, the last chapter we were in is um, in Judah chapter 5. We're in Judah chapter 5, King. I mean, maybe we'll start dropping the precepts up in there or what scriptures we're in so they can keep up um, or that they have it on record. Uh, where is where is Hashar? Uh, Hashar is taking care of, of Hashar. He's taking care of ambassadors of Christ. He's taking care of his family, his children. He's taking care of the nation business. Uh, General Hashar is being General Hashar, doing what the Most High has called him to do. Um, trust, if you know anything about the good general, he never liked the limelight. He never ever wanted to be in front of the camera, but because of certain things that took place in the community or certain topics that need to be um, thrust out there, he sent he sent out General Hashar. Now let's think about it. Every time there was a war, David did not, King David didn't always go to war. He sent that, sent this man out there. He sent his captains and his lieutenants and the soldiers to handle those wars. So in that same scenario, that's how the general gets down. So that's why you don't see the general right now but eventually if you listen to him you blink your eyes you'll miss it he's around all you got to do is come on the alpha omega clan channel out of new york and you'll get it you'll see him you want to speak anything on that um um um, um t priest of bond law can you said it all yeah. okay come 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 so back to where we were um it says crimes of violence against slaves by jews were probably quite rare since most of these occurred in rural areas where there were few Jews. But Jews in the towns and cities appear to have been quite content to abide by the excessively cruel punishment meted out to blacks who were caught by the law. These are a few examples of the testimony of Jews against Negroes taken from the Richmond court records. In 17, a loaf of white sugar worth $2 from Benjamin Solomon's home and was sentenced to five lashes on her bare back in order to be branded on her left hand. But they say we're the animals. They say we're the beasts. I guess this was civilizing us. This is straight brutality. But we out here murdering each other. It says two, two years later, Joseph Darnes Darmstadt had a bag and a lot, lot of beeswax valued at 50 shillings or shekels stolen from his store by Daniel Clayton, a free Negro and her Clayton sentenced to 39 lashes on the bare back. Another free Negro of stealing two silver watches valued at $32 from Meyer Angelo in 1832, and the culprit was sentenced to five years imprisonment, six months which was to be spent in solitary confinement. Now here it says three slaves were tried for hold on. So I can move it quick. It said Benjamin Wolf's store was broken into in 1797 and 500 in March and dollars in merchandise was stolen. Three slaves were tried for the crime, but only one was convicted. He was sentenced to be hung. It said Jews were among the many Southern citizens who appealed for the apprehension and return of runaway slaves. Sixteenth, a lot of boy named Ovid, the property of Judge A. Troward of the German coast, Germany, the Holocaust. This is what they're doing over into America. In America, to us, it says about 17 years of age, about five feet high. He had on a gray colored coat tee with a black velvet collar and plated buttons, a gray waistcoat with with white nankeen pantaloons and short boots. 
Whoever would deliver him to the subscriber or to his owner or secure him in any jail shall receive a reward of $20, right? It says not only did the Jews bring slaves to court as private citizens, but they also participated as public officials officials in legal actions against slaves. And then it talks about all the different names down here, right? It says Luis Gomez, the turnkey of the jail. These are all the people that were there, right? These are all the people that were involved. So again, when we're talking about the destruction of our people, as you see on social media, it's a lot of finger pointing back and forth. Tons of finger pointing back and forth. The black man blaming the black woman. The black woman blaming the black man. And who are we running to with all our problems? To our enemies. Looking for them to provide a solution for us when they're the biggest instigators and creators of the problem. Again, our sins got us into this condition, but the vices and the tools that they've used against us is their own creation. It's the mind of wicked men. Right? So let's get, give me a... Um, Let's go to the book of Ezra, chapter 9, verse 9. Ezra 9 and 9. Why is my eyes playing tricks on me? Give me one second. My eyes are playing tricks on me. All right, my bad. Uh, Ezra, you got, to, uh, Salaki, you got anything you want to part in? Uh, part in real quick or any wisdom on chief priest? Law King, you rolling, man. You rolling, do it. Okay, come, come. The water, the water, the water. Um, let's see. Ezra 9 and 9. Ezra 9 and 9. Because the thing about it is, again, in order for us to come up out of this condition, we have to change our mindset. We have to break away from the distortions of being thugs, killers, murderers, the hardest niggas around. You know, uh, uh, our women doing the things that we see on hope. It is so okay in today's society to talk about the ills of our men and the things that we can see that they're doing to be a cancer to our nation. But when it comes over to the portion of dealing with our women, we get attacked for that. And that's why I did, the, you know, me and the chief priest and the brothers, um, ambassadors of Christ, we did the lesson on the uh, destruction of the black family and all of that, right? So anyway, um, it's imperative that we understand that we're still right now in a great trespass against the most high that we are still this day, still yet in our captivity. And this is the time to wake up. This is the refreshing of the mind. Because once you can identify the problem and the key players in the problem and the ones who set up the game and the system for you to fail, then you are better at playing the game and flipping the game on those who created the game. It's like playing your favorite PS5 game or PS4 game or Xbox and beating beating the game, beating the boss, the master, the creator of the game. And you see all the listings at the end of the game, just like in a movie, they give you all the credits and contributing members of the creation of that movie or that game, right? So anyway, read um, Ezra chapter 9, verse 7. Ezra chapter 9, verse 7. Since the days of our fathers have we been in a great trespass into this day. And for our iniquities have have we, our kings and our priests, been delivered into the hand of the kings of the lands, to the swords, to captivity, and to a spoil, and to confusion of face, as it is this day. All right, so Slack, you see, it says, for our iniquities have we, our kings and our priests. Remember, we read First Peter two and nine. 
They're a nation of kings and priests. A royal holy nation, right? That was delivered into the hands of the kings of these lands. Remember, we're scattered all across the earth to the sword, to captivity and to a spoil and confusion of face as it is today. That's why we have all this confusion about who our people are. The Native Americans don't think they're Hispanic. The Hispanics don't always agree that they're the Native Americans. And then none of them want to say that they're us. When you go back into our history and understanding the biblical history, the archaeology, and the science behind all of this is that when you go back to our forefathers, and though I'm talking about the true seed of Israel, when we go back to that bloodline, we find out that we're blood related. That our people went through the same things. Some just had English being spoken to them. Some had French being spoken to them. Some had Spanish being spoken to them, right? So that's where we get the confusion of face. Cubans thinking they're different than the American blacks. Canadians thinking that they're different than Haitians. Dominicans, and don't let me talk about the Dominicans and Haitians, right? And so on and so on, right? These are the things that we have been suffering. And when you go into the history of all those lands, you'll find out the same thing happened to those people, right? So go ahead and read verse 8. Verse 8. And now for a little space, grace hath been showed from the Most High, our power, to leave us a remnant to escape and to give us a nail in his holy place that our power may lighten our eyes and give us a little reviving in our bondage. This is the reviving that is taking place. We are the remnant that's hoping to escape this bondage. That we're hoping that we can leave this bondage and go into a holy place, which is the land of Israel, which is Jerusalem, the city of Jerusalem, which is the mother of us all. That right now, the Most High Yahweh is trying to lighten your eyes and to give us a little reviving in our bondage. This is the revival. This is the refreshing. In the last class, we played, um, I forgot the brother's name, where he said that the revolution will not be televised. The revolution starts in your mind. The change of the thought process. Getting to understand yourself and how you think and why you think you think the way you think. And why do you call things that your forefathers and foremothers knew that was evil that you call good now? Verse 9. Verse 9. For we were bondmen, yet our power hath not forsaken us in our bondage, but hath extended mercy unto us in the sight of the kings of Persia to give us a reviving to set up the house of our power and to repair the desolation there, thereof and to give us a wall in Judah and in Jerusalem. Right. In verse 10 it says, And now, Yahweh, our power, what shall we say after this? For we have forsaken thy commandments. The forsaking of our commandment, of the commandments. And they are commandments because the Most High gave it to us, right? This is why our enemies got the upper hand on us. This is why we see the continuous destruction and the things like, like when you was reading about that brother receiving, I think he got received like so many lashes of the sister. Think about how we do the same thing to our people when we're angry at them. Think about how we can speak for ourselves or speak up for ourselves or say anything in defense of ourselves. When your brother is wrong you in modern times, guess what? We're quick to give them the lashes. That's a learned trait. That's a learned behavior. To understand, to be able to love each other, you have to understand where the hate came from and who showed you the hate. That you're following, right? Let's jump over to Esther chapter 7, verse 4. Esther 7 and 4. 
Esther 704. And just bear with me real quick. Yep, Esther 7 and 4, read. Esther chapter 7, verse 4. Take not only thankfulness away from among men. So, like you, so like you, we're in the book of Esther chapter 7, verse 4. Esther. And the, and the, no, you're reading Ezra. No, this is the Old Testament. Oh, okay, okay. It sounded like you were saying Esther. Okay, okay, right, right. Okay, my bad. You said Esther right seven. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Esther seven and four. Read. Esther chapter seven, verse four. For we are sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be slain, and to perish. But if we had been sold for bond men and bond women, I had held my tongue. Although the enemy could not countervail the king's damage. Right. Again, we were being sold by our enemies to be destroyed, to be slain, and to perish. We have been bondmen and we're still bondmen and women. We have to come out of the mindset of that destruction and get back to keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, right? We have to get back into our heritage. We have to get back into understanding we're supposed to be, be a people of a sound mind. And we have the power of the Most High God living in us through obedience to him and him alone. Right? And to live out the ways of Hamashiach and Hawashai, right? This is what, give me on 2 Timothy 2 and 3, right? 2 Timothy chapter 2, and let me just confirm that. That's what I want. Go ahead and read um, um, Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. So with the information that I'm giving you, um, I never try to claim to be some great teacher and all of that. I just believe in putting the information in front of the people, allowing them to digest it as the, as the Most High has given me this spirit to teach in this manner. And I pray that the information that comes along to you, that you go back and you're watching these videos and you're looking up this information, looking up these titles of these PDFs and these books that, I, that we're presenting before you guys. The scriptures is, is, is our foundation, always. The scriptures is our history. We learn the great things about the wars that we've lost and understanding why we lost those wars and why we went into these different captivities and the things that we read about in history, in Egypt, um, Greece, um, under the Persian and Medes, Babylon. A lot of times our people just see this book and just think it's mythology or stories. But this book bears witness to our history. It bears witness to the curses that we've been under. It bears witness to the curses to help identify us through our generations because they have been upon us. And again, once we stop warring with the Most High, and I'm going to say it again, once we stop warring, as they say in the world, our arms are too short to box with God. Once we stop warring with the Most High, we can come up out of these conditions. Shalom, 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 two braids. Shabbat shalom. When we understand that our arms are too short to box with God, we'll be all right. That means getting back to keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, not being rebellious, taking heed, reading these scriptures doing our due diligence, and rehearsing the righteous acts. So go ahead and read 2 Timothy 2 and 1. 2 Timothy, so like 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Uh -huh. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in, in the grace that is in Yahweh Shai, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same co commit 
thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach other also others also mm -hmm. thou therefore endure hardness and as a good soldier of Yahweh Shai. Right, so we have to endure as good soldiers of Yahweh Shai. Because we have many witnesses in these last days. You got Israelites popping up all over the earth, all on your news, all on YouTube, all on social media, all in different platforms. So the same thing that you're hearing from us Commit thyself to faithful men and women. Find those who will be able to teach you and to show you. For me, I when I came into the faith or reawakened into the faith, I sought out teachers. I sought out men. Because the scriptures tell us to come together. So as we go through these curses, and coming up out of these curses and moving over to the, some blessings in our lives to the day that the most high uh Yahweh Shai returns to set us free we have a lot of work to do and a lot of things that we need to understand right so anyway emmanuel give me uh isaiah 45 and 4. i got a few more scriptures then we're going to go ahead and get up out of here because i know it's 9 30 my time and then that means it's 10 30 other places on the east coast well on the east coast so we're going to go ahead and get ready to close out i just wanted to bring out some scriptures for you guys so you guys can remember these things starting with the verse one isaiah 45 it's a lot isaiah chapter 45 it's like you know i isaiah 45 and 4. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 4. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect, I have even called thee by thy name. I have, sur uh -huh. I have surnamed thee, though thou has not known me. <clears throat> so again, remember, Jacob is the most high servant, and Israel is his elect. We've been called him by his name. We were given the law, statutes, and commandments. He showed his word up unto Jacob. He didn't deal with the other nations, family. That's why he had surnamed us his sons. Named us Israel or Yasser Allah, right? Huh? Let's, I'm going to jump over to Isaiah 41. Isaiah 40, 41 and verse 8. What was that verse? Isaiah chapter 41, verse 8. Sometimes I deal with dyslexia. Sorry. Sometimes these numbers be looking in reverse. Isaiah 41 and 8. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 8. Uh -huh. But thou, Israel, art my servant. Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. Read. Thou, whom I have taken from the ends of the earth, and called thee from the chief men thereof, and said unto thee, Thou art my servant. I have chosen thee, and not cast thee away. Done. You see that? These are the gifts, the blessings that we need to return to. Kind. To return to being a servant unto the Most High. Again, you see that the Most High has chosen Israel to be a servant. If you're in this kingdom and in this empire, we're servants. We go work every Monday through Friday, Saturday, Sunday for the white man. Whether we work in, in corporate America or in, 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 in construction in the school system or whatever we get up faithfully to do those works for him and we think about that on our way to work when we're drinking our coffee on the way to work while we sit there eating our lunch at our desk we're willing to be servants to the people that enslaved us and have us still in bondage and in captivity 
why don't we take that same action and thought process, but action for the most high? Because remember, we're the chosen. And remember, the most high called us from the chief men out of all the earth. And that we are his servants, and he have chosen us, and will not cast us away. Remember the law, the law, statutes, and commandments are strength. It's our wisdom and our knowledge, and the scriptures say fools hate knowledge. So I hope this little time that we spent with you guys tonight was um, edifying. Um, again, the PDF or the information I was bringing out is from the Jew and Negro slavery in the Old South. Um, I'm actually going to drop the link in the group um, right now if anyone wants to kind of go through this on their own. And take a look at this and i'm trying to see how it populates so pretty much what you're going to do is you're just going to click on it copy that link and you have access to everything that i read and you can take it and read with your family with your loved ones do your own research and continue to grow and on that note we say a shah shabbat the most high in your shot bless and keep y'all and we say shabbat shalom shabbat shalom, shabbat shalom.